Hello everybody, it's me. Welcome back to the video. Now, in this video, I want to talk about some tips and tricks that can help you improve in PvP. Some of these you know, some of these you might not know, but a lot of them are pretty basic tips, but I just wanted to refresh people's memory because there are a few things that are just really essential that I really don't see a whole lot of people do um, very often when I watch PvP battles. But yeah, hopefully you guys enjoy, and let me know in the comments if you guys already knew some of these things. But without further ado, let's get into it. Now the very first thing that I really want to talk about is type matchups. It's very, very important to know your type matchups in Doodle World. You can always open up the type chart inside a battle, you can do all of that, but it is so, so important to know what is happening with your type. If you have a crystal type versus a mind type, you're probably gonna lose that fight. If you're a fighting type versus a crystal type, you're probably gonna win that fight. You need to, you really need to understand type matchups and it's very important. And just don't feel afraid to open up the type chart and just make sure like, oh, is this what it's weak to? Let me check. Just don't feel afraid to do that. It's extremely important to know. It'll definitely save you in a pinch. And on the subject of type matchups, I want to talk about, I know this is kind of a weird transition, but I want to also talk about Doodle's abilities. Now, I'm going to have little examples being played on screen so you can understand what I mean by this. But in the example that you're seeing now, you're going to see a Deferno versus a Rotera. Now, you can see that I have a super effective Shatter, but if I click it here, you can see that it avoided it because of Levitate. It is incredibly important to know your type matchups, or not type matchups, what um, doodles have what ability. If something has Levitate, make sure you don't click Earth moves or you're a little safer with them. Like stuff like Arcapos, Riptorvent, uh, Deferno are all popular Levitate users. You need to know what things have what abilities. Like for example, Zapoera, it has um, Capoeira. Capoeira, it always hits the maximum of Helicopter Kick and Lightning Kick. Grimantle has Vampire, so it'll leech health. Skadina has Titanium Bucket. It has all of that. And it's important to know that when you're having battles. And then the next thing that I really want to want to talk about is analyzing weaknesses on the opponent's team on team preview. I see a lot of people kind of just immediately press go whenever they have like a fast hit and runner. Let's say Zapoera. It's a very quick hit and runner. Pretty reliable thanks to Riot Shield. And I see a lot of people just immediately click OK, let's go without going to actually analyze their team. You should spend at least 45 seconds to a minute to analyze what your opponent's weak to. For another example, I'll show you this team in front of us. I don't know what it looks like, so I'm just gonna put in an editor's note that's probably gonna say what it is. But yeah, what do you think would excel if um, I just need to keep it alive and it would do really, really well? I'm assuming the editor's note is there, right, like right now. Let's assume it's there. But yeah, that is probably what would excel really well so you got to get that on the field a lot and do a lot of work because that's not something that your opponent really wants to deal with and putting pressure on opponents teams with something that they don't want to deal with is the best way to win a game because they just won't have any way of dealing with it but yeah that's another one let's hop to the next one and now this this one is something that i have talked about quite a few times this is the first turn speed matchup which it comes down to which doodle gets sent out first. Let's say for example, right now, I'll show you an example on screen. Let's say that we started this battle and I got sent out first versus my opponent's Rotera. As you can see, I got sent out first, right? So that means I have the higher speed stat. So I can safely click hit and run and then go into Skadeen safely without taking any, like a lot of damage from the Rotera. But, what if the Rotera got sent in first? In its next example, you're gonna see that. So right here, you can see that we start the battle, my opponent sends out Rotera first, and then I send in Zapoera second. That means that I am the slower one and I need to switch out to be safe because I'm not gonna get one shot by Shatter, you know? Because that's not something that I wanna do. So I'm gonna, instead of going for hit and run and getting that valuable chip, I'm just gonna go straight into Skadeen 
just a safer option and then later i'll be able to do more work with zapoera but yeah i just wanted to save it and make sure i didn't die but yeah that's something that important to know so whoever gets sent out first is 100 percent the one that's going to be out speeding unless it's a speed tie then good luck but yeah let's hop on the next one now this next one is pretty fun and it is it's definitely more of a tactical one and something that everyone should do but you need to know when to predict predicting a move can completely change the game for you there are a lot of different possibilities in a singular turn i'm not entirely sure how many options that you have there are four moves that you can click four moves your opponents can click and then you have six possible or five possible things you can switch into and there's just a lot that can happen in a single turn. Being able to predict what your opponent wants to do can work out really, really well. There are times that you want to predict, and there are times that you don't want to predict. So there's a been I can't I don't really know a good example to show, but if you have a safe prediction that even if you get it wrong, you're not you're not losing, then yeah, go for it and see if it works out. It should be completely fine. But if you like, let's say for example, um, <clears throat> they have, I'm going to go road Terra versus my Volt Enchant and I want to click water type climate shot, but in the back they have a water type that can, that they have a more veil in the back, right? And in the back, I have a, um, say Grimantle. So it comes down to this. Do I want to predict the more veil um, coming in against the Volt Enchant, or do I want to predict um, huh, him staying in so I can climb it shot? That's kind of a situation that would come down to who's winning in that scenario. But you need to know when to predict and don't be afraid to do it. If it's safe, go for it. If you are losing and you need to get a good prediction, do it. Don't be afraid. To take some risks because that risk could end up winning you the battle but yeah that's a nice one so that's the next one now for this next one might be a little bit of a longer segment but you need to know how to team build i don't really think that i am the best team builder it's definitely not one of my strong suits when it comes down to battling um but i know the basics of team building and something that, that let's go for example let's say i want to build around volt enchant it is weak to both crystal and earth so i need to find things that can resist that so first i picked up Gramantle, which honestly pairs really well if you are using the dark brooch item because it makes it become a dark and flying type or dark and air type and that allows it to it is it's weak to beast it's weak to light, it's weak to electric, which are all things that Volt Enchant resists. Volt Enchant is weak to crystal and earth, which one of them is neutral and grammatical, and the other it is completely immune to, which is really, really solid. And you also have Skadeen for a crystal switch in, which is nice, which is also weak to um, um, electric, which makes mm, the Volt Enchant come in easier. But this is, also, this is then weak to, let's say, plant, which Grimantle can switch into. If you're weak to um, fighting, you have the, you have got the freaking Jirsera. You also got the Grimantle for that. And yeah, I really like these four as a team. It's really, really solid. And Zapware is nice because of the hit and run. I don't really know what to do for this last slot, but I'll figure it out eventually. But yeah, knowing how to team build and knowing what synergizes well is 100% something that you can do. You can just, you if you're playing casually, just slap on things that you want. Yeah, that'll work and it'll be fine. But if you want to play competitively, you need to know how to team build and you need to know team synergies. And that is going to help you tremendously in the long run. And I guess you can also talk about play styles. There are multiple different play styles in Doodle World. There is like, um like hyper offense, offense, uh, balanced offense, uh, bulky, bulky offense. I think instead of balanced offense, it's bulky offense, bulky, bulky balance. You know, there's a lot of different play styles. There's stall, there's semi stall. You know, there's a lot of different play styles you can play. I personally like the balance um, side of the game because just balancing out your team, having like some things that are defensive, some things that are offensive, I think is a really good way of playing. You can play hyper offense, which hyper offense is just using a bunch of offensive things. And 
Stall is just having six things that are incredibly bulky and don't actually do damage. They just try to win the game off of pure chip damage. But yeah, knowing um, how to team build and knowing team styles is definitely a good way to start um, getting into PvP. And for this next part, I'm going to talk about checks and counters. Now, if you don't know, checks and counters, I always get them mixed up. But a check keeps something in check. Let's say, for example, I have Zapoera and they have a Skadeen. Zapoera is going to keep that Skadeen in check but it can't directly switch into it unless it wants to take a tremendous amount of damage. So, Zapwira is a check. If I recall correctly, a check is something that can switch in, um, it, it can threaten something, but can't directly switch into it without taking substantial damage. And a counter is something that fully counters something, for example. So, let's say, uh, Voltatu versus Rotera. Voltatu completely beats Rotera in every way. The only thing it gets really gets hit by is the Heat Bash. So you can just hit and run off a Heat Bash, Air Strike, and get Chip. There's also Girocera versus Springling. There's Skadeen versus Malzuri. There's a lot of different things, though Malzuri does, I guess, have ways to beat it. But yeah, knowing checks and counters is really solid. Like, for example, if I go to like Remy, I know that Remy is a, inc an incredibly solid check. Um, or even counter to Voltatu because it has Conductor and it also resists air, so you have a really good check to that. Skadeen is a nice, um, solid check for most melee things in the game. It's a good check to Rotera if you can do pretty good damage to that. Grimantle is a really solid check to Morvale to, or the counter to Morvale to check to Hatrix. Really solid. This also does, um, check to Flays and it also can check Archipos, which is nice. Catholos, I kind of forget what Catholos can check, but I know it's pretty important. I think, um, it was something, but I'm forgetting what it is. Koryu. Catholos is really, really, really solid against Koryu, so you can definitely use it against that. Zapoera doesn't really check or counter anything because it's not defensive, it's an offensive thing. Um, and this is a good counter to Springling, to most, um, like, to Lena, it's a good check to. But yeah. Knowing your checks and counters can really help you win a game, and you definitely need to know those. It's very important. And this next one, this next one is uh, pretty obvious, but if your opponent is low, let's say my Zapwira is 30 HP, right? It's not going to tank any attack, because I have, like, no defense, right? If you have something that is low, you outspeed it, but they have a switch into a move, if they want to save their lower thing you should always click the neutral or even not very effective move that can hit the other thing neutrally. Let's say, for example, I had my Zapoera and they had Catholos, right? Let's say that happened. And they had a Gineco, right? And Catholos fully counters Gineco. And let's say I'm like, oh, I want to save my Zapoera, right? Like, I wanted to save it and, um... Well, I guess it's that's not the best example because you fully wall it with Catholos. I guess it will come down to, um, I guess Rotera. Not entirely sure, but it's basically, um, if something's low, just click either the neutral, not very effective move. If they have a possible switch and you just want to play it as safe as possible to get a guaranteed kill or at least some guaranteed damage. Because if I have, um, my, let's go Zapoera and I have Skadeen in the back and they have a Rotera that outspeeds me in front of me, then I could go just go Skadeen and save my Zapoera. So regardless, you'd probably click hit and run in that situation just to gain momentum, which even if you get the kill on the Skadeen or the Zapoera on the hit and run, it's completely fine. But yeah, anyway, let's hop to the next one. And another important thing to know is your base stats. You need to know what something is going to do and how it's going to do that. Let me go to Girocera, for example. It's pretty well-rounded when you look at it. It has pretty solid stats and generally is considered to be all-rounder. It can be, like, you could use, like, a speedy one. It's honestly 80 speed, 74 magical defense, 90 magical attack, 80 defense, 92 energy, 95 attack, or 92 attack, sorry, not energy. I think I said energy at some point. Um, 
but yeah it's honestly pretty solid as an all-rounder but when you look at its abilities um it has refresh so you know that it needs to um be a tanky thing and you need to invest on either side of the defense it doesn't really matter it's going to be good either way and then you also have a uh, volt enchant which is uh, 101 speed 100 something odd attack once it uh awakens it gets uh, pretty solid defenses so you know that it needs to have health and magical attack and then you have Zapoera, which is incredibly fast and hits pretty hard. So you want to know you want to attack and speed. And then you have Skadeen, which has a lot of health, good defenses, and generally a little bit lower offenses. So you're going to go with a like, more bulkier set. And then Catholos is pretty much the same thing. And then you got Grimantle, which is a bulky and has a lot of magical defense. So you know that you want to get health and magical defense. There are points where you could go for a melee defensive Gramantle. Um, like something that, like Growato, for example, you go a melee defensive Growato. But in that scenario, I don't ever think it's worth it to um, change up what defensive side you want to go for. Like, for example, magically defensive Curse Cloak Monologue. I don't really see a point because you're trying to be a melee wall. And then you're gonna you're definitely going to see that you don't hit you can't tank melee attacks as well. You can definitely tank them, but yeah, I don't think investing on a mixed side of defenses if you have a really low range defense stat and a really high melee defense stat you don't want to invest into the range you want to invest into the melee because that's the whole point of it you don't want to try to be a hybrid wall when you could just do something else but yeah that's another one let's hop into the next one this is actually going to be a very short one this is just use the damage calc if there are ever points where you're unsure if you can get a kill you should just go to the damage calc Usually when I do my damage calculations, I like to go to the highest possible defensive stat that a certain doodle can get. Just so I can see like, oh, so I would kill this. So no matter what they are, you're 100% going to kill it. For example, you can go Horn, Headband, Vial of Tears, and Beach Ball. That is the highest possible stats that I think that they can get. Unless I am missing something, but I'm pretty sure that's the highest they can get uh, in the bulk wise So if you wanted to do that, you can 100% tell like oh I am definitely gonna be able to kill this then if it's definitely a, like a two-hit KO So you'll know you'll definitely know Yeah, the damage calc is pretty important and one last little thing to end it off Don't get discouraged. You're gonna lose some battles You're gonna win some battles and you need just don't get discouraged. Just know that even if you lose a battle, you need to see why you lost. And you need to know that you did not battle perfectly. There might have, there may have been some RNG factors, but if you lost a battle on, in, in a perfectly even um, battlefield, like if you guys had the exact same team with no RNG and you lost, that is your fault. That is entirely your fault because you didn't make the plays that you needed to make. But you don't need to get discouraged because of that. That's just one battle, you know? No one's going to go around telling everyone like, hey, I beat this guy up. He sucks. No one's going to do that. That's just childish to do. But regardless, hopefully you all enjoyed and I'll see everyone in the next one. Hopefully these tips can help you out and win your PvP battles. But yeah, I'll see everyone in the next one. See ya.